Just as the world was reeling from the Cuban Missile Crisis, when it had come closer than ever to a nuclear conflict between the US and the Soviet Union, both the US and the Soviets launched high-altitude nuclear tests at the edge of space. One of nine such tests within a two-week period at one of the most dangerous times in modern history. These tests had been run since 1958 and created effects never seen before. The radiation belt of trapped charged particles created by Starfish Prime persisted for many months and was directly responsible for the failure of nine satellites as they passed through it over the following days and weeks, including Telstar 1, the world's first commercial telecommunications satellite. Due to the unexpectedly large scale of the effects caused by Starfish Prime, the next test, Euraka, which was to be a one megaton device at 1,000 kilometers, was cancelled because of the fear that it would damage many more satellites. Things came to a halt after a valve failed causing a fuel leak on a Thor rocket of the Blue Gill Prime test. With the rocket in flames on the launch pad, the range officer sent the destruct command which not only destroyed the rocket, but also most of the launch pad and caused the warhead to explode, but not detonate. This spread radioactive core material all over the launch area, requiring it to be decontaminated before the launch pad could be rebuilt. Meanwhile, in the Soviet Union, they were conducting their own high altitude tests at Karagandy in Kazakhstan. The devices were 300 kiloton and exploded at an altitude of 290 kilometers. For the test, a 570 kilometer section of telephone lines in the area were instrumented to see the effect of EMP. When the device was detonated, it burned out the entire length of the telephone line, with currents of up to 1500 to 3400 amps being recorded. It also caused the destruction of the Karaganda power station and shut down a thousand kilometers of shallow buried power cabling. On the 1st of November 1962, the US carried out the 400 kiloton Kingfish test at 80 kilometers. And on the same day, the Soviets carried out a 300 kiloton test at 59 kilometers. Both of these were just two days after the Cuban Missile Crisis had come to an end. The US's final test called Tightrope was carried out on the 3rd of November 1962. In the end, both sides came to the conclusion that testing nuclear weapons in space was just too indiscriminate and wide-ranging and could cause as much damage to their own space hardware, early warning systems and even manned missions as to the other sides. With the reintroduction of the Test Ban Treaty of 1963, space-based testing was banned with the possible exception of the Vela incident in the South Atlantic of 1979, when a characteristic double flash of a nuclear detonation was picked up by a retired but still functional Vela hotel satellite, one which was designed to look for breaches in the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. Although no one has admitted responsibility, it's believed from the available evidence that it was a small device in the range of around three kilotons, possibly a neutron bomb being secretly tested in the upper atmosphere by either the Israelis or the South Africans, or the two working together.